we are starting a new project and uh, I was thinking and thinking and thinking about it and wondering what it is we could do that would be really fun and interesting and it's not like I'm not going to paint babies I am going to play, paint plenty of babies but I thought what can we do that's a little bit different a friend of mine on an art forum thought it would be hilarious to send me this sculpt she knows that I am not a fan of animal sculpts. I don't know why. It's not my thing. I don't have anything against anybody who sculpts them or collects them or paints them or loves them. It's just not my cup of tea. So she thought it would be quite hilarious to send me this. Yeah, Nikki, you know who you are. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Um, yeah, she thought it was hilarious, and I sort of think it's hilarious, too. At first, I didn't even know what it was. I thought, oh, it's a chimp, and then I thought, no, that's not a chimp. What is that? Is that an ape? Is it a gorilla? I don't know my primates very well, especially infant primates, but I'm pretty sure it's a gorilla. The artist is Sharon Azanaro. I hope I'm not butchering her name, and the sculpt is Kiki. And many of you are probably more familiar with this sculpt than I am. But this is my first time ever doing anything like this. And I so can't believe I'm doing it. Now, I was kind of, eh, when I was thinking about making it, thinking, okay, we'll do browns and blacks and grays. And we'll try to make it look as realistic as we can. And it just didn't, like, make me want to get up early in the morning and do it. So I started thinking, what can I do? Hmm, how about an albino gorilla baby. That sounds fun. And I started to get excited about it. And I said, oh yeah, that's really cool because I have some really pretty blonde, almost white platinum mohair that would work great for that. And then I was thinking a little more and I thought, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint a pink gorilla baby. And that resonated with me a million times better. And I got super excited. The deal The deal is I'm gonna to have to dye some mohair a pretty pink, which I am not afraid to do. So that can be part of the process. We'll do that together if you don't mind. And right now what I'm doing is just priming this vinyl with some thinning medium. I don't always prime vinyl and I don't always use thinning medium, but this just felt like the right thing to do because I'm not sure where this is going. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be using lots of paint, a little paint, air dry paint. Right now my plan is to use Genesis, but you never know what's gonna happen down the road. This is kind of uncharted territory for me, and we're just gonna play together and figure this out. So I thought best thing to do would be to prime this vinyl. It's just like, you know, putting gesso on a canvas. You're starting from a nice blank slate that has texture that will, will grab onto some paint. And let me show you what I'm using. Let me hang up that baby arm there. I'm using Bountiful Babies Look Alive Thinning Medium. It has a bit of a satin finish to it. And if you buy it, you will not get it looking like this. It'll be clear. What I did was I added a tiny bit of um, burnt umber. I didn't do it for this baby. I did it for a different project. I don't usually use um, the Look Alive Medium. I just started using it. And I thought it wouldn't hurt. And it's not, you know, affecting this much. This vinyl is actually a pretty cool color. I'm not sure it would be the best color for a new a reborn baby. It might make it a little bit difficult. But for a primate, especially an albino primate, I think this is a pretty darn good color to start with. I mean, it's like a couple of steps got done for me. And so I'm kind of excited about that. And I'm just gonna do one or two layers pop it in the oven at 265 for about seven minutes. If I do it twice, I'll let it cool completely between. And this went on a little thick. I think I'm gonna let that alone and put some of this extra over here. And just a nice thin layer, just making sure I get in between those fingers and toes. And um, it's not too bumpy or lumpy and I don't leave out anything. This sculpt is textured and I think it's supposed to look like fur, what I'm doing, but we'll find out. 
after this is baked, I think what I'm going to do is um, do kind of a bluey layer. Just kind of shade a little bit and try to do some veining where I can. I think that'll add to some realism. And I mean, primates and humans are are mostly the same, right? I'm not sure what our uh, genetic difference is. I think our DNA is just like itty bitty bits different. So I'm thinking if you were an albino primate or an albino human, you would be able to see those veins pretty easily through your skin because it would be so pale. So I think I'm gonna give that a try. The baby just came out of the oven a little bit ago. Still just a teeny bit warm, but not too warm. So I think what I'm gonna do is just play around with some blue shading. And the reason why I'm using the blue is because he's gonna be an albino gorilla. So I'm gonna be using a lot of blue and red, I think. So I have no clue what I'm doing. Um, I mean, if you're making something that's a, kind of an imaginary thing, then you kind of have full license to do all kinds of silly stuff. This gorilla is heavily creased, meaning those creases are super deep, and there's a lot of them. And so I think I'm just putting a little blue in the heavier of the creases. I'm not going to do all the creases blue. Um, and just because his skin is intended to be pale, I think that will kind of lend to that. I'm hoping that's, that's my hope anyway. And make him look a little bit more pale. And kind of like you're seeing all that under skin. I don't know. This will be my my little experiment. And I used that brush that had the red in it and it kind of reddened his eyes a little bit. It feels like this this isn't going to take a lot of layers. That doesn't mean I won't put a lot of layers in it because as you know I have a hard time stopping. I like to keep going and keep going. I don't like the party to end but it doesn't feel like it's gonna need a lot. Again, I think this vinyl color is really awesome for what I'm doing. Couldn't have picked a better color. I mean, it's already very skin-like. Sometimes I get Reborns and they're just the right color and their vinyl is just like the right soft. And I think to myself, why can't, all, why can't they just have this recipe and just do this over and over and over again. It feels like every time a sculpt is made, even if, it's by, even if it's by the same company, that it's different every single time. And I can't help but think that somewhere they record what they're doing, or they have a you know a recipe, and that the people who you know ordered up that batch can say, you know, whatever you did last time, do that again over and over and over again, and don't stop. That's really cool. I guess it doesn't work that way. I don't know, are you? That's my son sniffling back there. I made him a little a little art station with a little end table that I found in a cute little vintage chair and stocked him up a bucket full of art supplies. It's summertime and I'm trying not to work as much during the summer so I can spend more time with him. But inevitably I'm out here and um, and I'm gonna, you know, have him around. I enjoy him. And I can't have him on the television or on a screen all the time because it's bad for his little brain. So he comes out here and he does his work in his little studio space while I do mine. And I love it. And he probably doesn't think it's so awesome right now, but later on he might. My older son used to come with me to work all the time. Um, I pick him up after school and he's been like a good three hours after school with me at my little, I used to have this retail store that had a studio. And the way I offset my cost for the studio was I had a retail space up front where I sold things that I made and um, other things that other people made, very unusual things, and um, just some fun gifty things. I don't know, kind of like Etsy Live. And um, he would come with me every day to work and to earn money, he'd do little things like help me merchandise or you know put price tags on things, that kind of stuff. 
And then one time I was looking around and I said, you know, I need a piece of furniture right here that's a little bit tall and not too wide because I need some height on this wall. We went online and we were looking at pieces of furniture and this piano, this old piano came up and it wasn't in the best of shape, but you know, it was funky enough and cool enough. And I said, oh, look at this piano, you know, and he's going, oh, that would be so cool. I think he was maybe, I want to say like 10 at the time, maybe 11. And um, he said, yeah, you should get it. And I thought it was going to be, you know, very expensive. And it was like $200. And I went, well, that's cheaper than a table. I'm not going to find a table that high. And I really don't want to put a bookcase there. And so I called the guy and I said, well, yeah, I'd really like it, but I have no idea how to get a piano moved or get it here. And he said, you know what? My sister left this piano here out in my workshop for so long and I told her if she didn't get it out of here I was going to get rid of it and she said just get rid of it and I really need the space and I have a big truck and if you buy it today I will deliver it to where you're at assuming that you are not too far away and it wasn't I was like within two miles of where his shop was so he uh, brought it right over absolutely tore a hole in the flooring but I didn't care and it was a little bit out of tune. I've never had that piano tuned since he brought it to me. He said, you're gonna to need to have this tuned. And um, some of the like the ivory on some of the keys were missing. But other than that, you know, it was an awesome piano. It was really cool looking. And I had it in my shop forever. And um, my son decided he was gonna teach himself to play the piano. And so he went online and he looked up all the all the keys and what they meant and I know nothing about music. I'm the mother of a musician and I know nothing about music. And he made these little stickers and he stuck them on all the keys, all the letters on the on the keys. And uh, he handed me a piece of paper a couple days later and it said like A, D, F, G, F, F, G, D, A or whatever. And I said, what's this? He said, oh, that's somewhere over the rainbow. I said, what do you mean that's somewhere over the rainbow? He said, yeah, those are all all the, that's the way you play somewhere over the rainbow. I said, how did you figure that out? He said, I just keep playing it until it sounded right. And I thought that was kind of cool. You know, I was like, hey, that's kind of brilliant. Good for you. And little by little, I think over two years, he taught himself to play the piano. I mean, not well. He couldn't play like, you know, a concert pianist or anything, but he understood the way the piano worked and he could by ear play whatever he wanted. And, uh, it was kind of the start of his career. And when later on, when I closed down my business, I had a baby late in life. I decided, you know what? This is a great store and this is a great opportunity and I love being here, but I work so hard and I'm, I know how fast childhood goes by and I don't want to miss any of it with my littlest one. So I closed down my store so that I could be at home with him when he was born. And when I closed down the store, my older son said, mom, we need to bring the piano home. And I said, oh, I'm just gonna donate it. And he said, that's my piano. I, I, you can't give that, he was serious. I mean, it's like a kid with a favorite stuffed animal. He was like, you cannot give my piano away. And I said, well, honey, I have no idea where the heck we will put it. And it has a very rare sound and uh, just, just, it's the way the cabinet is built and stuff. I, again, don't know enough about music to talk about that well. And I can't say no to those big blue eyes and I can't say no to a boy who loves music as much as he does. And he, he, as a kid, he never asked for much. He was one of those kids that was just super easy going. I paid these guys from Home Depot a hundred bucks. I rented a truck and they brought it over and settled it into a part of my house and there it still is. You just watched me blue an entire monkey head. This is probably not the way I would do it for an average reborn baby. That is, uh, that's a lot of blue and it's kind of deep. That probably wouldn't translate well for a reborn baby, so that's probably not the way I would do it. But again, I'm just going with my instinct and my feel for this gorilla. I feel like I'm just gonna have fun and I'm not gonna worry too much. And I kind of like it. And remember that this is just one layer. I'm gonna be doing lots and lots of layers of different colors and they will all react differently with each other. And I'm not gonna do too much because again, this is gonna be an albino or a pink gorilla. So. Um